I want to share a scripture with you out of Ecclesiastes, out of Ecclesiastes um, chapter 11, verse um, 4. It says this, he who watches the wind will not sow. He who looks at the clouds will not reap. I know a little bit about farming, just a little bit. I worked on a dairy farm for my summers through Bible college, and I I planted a garden a time or two, and I know that if you observe them, they will keep you from going forward. Yes, amen. And I, I just want to say this, everything will have problems with it. That's right. Nothing is problem free, and he that watch, he who watches the wind, you watch the situation, you watch the circumstance. We did that this morning. We were talking about is it going to snow ice up tomorrow? We were watching the snow. We were watching the wind. We were watching, we were watching things. I'll wait until you get down when everybody's watching you. <laughs> They're not watching over here. They're watching the wind, right? <laughs> but we were looking at the weather apps. I'm telling you my house, we had four of us there. We all had phones. We were all looking at the same weather app and make it, trying to make different decisions. If you look at the problem, the circumstances, or anything, it'll keep you from moving forward. And I'm going to tell you this, we are now in a time in our country where you're going to see some wind, but don't let what you see hinder what God has spoken to your heart and what he's given you to believe. Amen. Yeah, give the Lord a praise offering. You can, look at, you can look at the circumstances, you can look at the situations, and you can be paralyzed. I was, I got up this morning, nice and early. And what do you do when you get up nice and early? You turn on the TV, right? So I went to YouTube. And I've got some favorite preachers I like to listen to. And I was listening to one of them. And they were talking about, they were talking about what's coming in front of us. And uh, I got in a car and I started replaying what I heard, and I said, that just puts fear in people. And see, that's what, the, that's what who watches the wind, that's what the wind will do. Wind will put fear in you and cause you not to do what God has set in front of you to do. Amen. So, don't this morning let the wind discourage you from doing what God has called you to do. And this fact, this is talking about sowing. This is talking about sowing seed. But it means a lot, has a lot of other meaning to it as well. So, he who watches the wind, and he, he will not sow. And he who looks at the clouds will not reap. If you look at the wind, you'll definitely not sow. Because, I mean, you'll not reap because you won't sow. And it's so in a, in a biblical principle or a principle of life is sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping is a principle in God's word. It's a principle of a life. Um, so i got a few little notes here I want to share with you. Be careful of what you're looking at. Be careful what you're looking at. I said that this morning. I listened to a preacher on, pre on YouTube, and, and when he was all said and done, he meant well, but I looked at it, and I, I said, oh, my goodness. Be careful what you look at. And here's the thing. You cannot predict the wind. You can't predict the stock market. You can't predict your jobs. You can't predict a lot of things. The only thing you can predict is God will lead you through. He will help you. Um, you can't, you know, you can't, here's the thing about the wind, you can't even see it. Something you can't even see, we allow to put fear in us and to keep us from sowing. Now, here's something else I wrote down. You don't know how God will bless you. You're very limited in Knowing how God will bless you, but God is very extravagant in and how he can do it. Here is, here is a couple things I wrote down. I wrote down the Red Sea. Moses, standing at the Red Sea, 
with a mountain on this side, an army that wants to enslave him behind him, and the sea in front of him, and no place to go. Let me tell you, Moses was, that's where the old saying is he came from, he, got, he was between a rock and a hard place. Because the rock was over here, the hard place was behind him, but God delivered him anyway. Daniel, in the den of lions, he should have gotten eaten. The story should have went a lot different than it did. But God can deliver you out of the den of lions. And let me tell you, we're going to get in some den of lions before this thing's over. And you need to trust God when they're throwing you down in the pit where the lions are at. You'll remember that when you need it. What about like, what about <clears throat> Saul's army and Daniel, I mean David, killed Goliath? The situation looked, looked very, very bad for, for deliverance with a 13-year-old or 14-year-old boy who walked, okay, I need, a, I need a volunteer. I need somebody. Anybody in here 14 years old or are they somewhere else? Come right here. Why don't you stand right there? Look at him. Now I'm Goliath. And you're, and you're dad, David. What, who are you? you David. Turn around. This is about the size difference. Of course, I think you're a little bigger than David. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> but the size difference and, and the situation looked awful. But when God is in it, because he said, you come to me with the store, sword and a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. And I want to read you one last thing I, I wrote down. The problem, the problem determines your value. The problem you face and win determines the value, your value. Because like David looked right at Goliath and he faced a big problem. And that problem gave David his value. So don't, don't, look at the, don't look at the wind and not sow. Don't look at the clouds and not reap. Look at the wind and say, I'm going to sow anyway. Look at the clouds and say, I'm going to collect. I'm going to reap. I'm going to reap. I'm going to reap. Because that's the will of God. Can I hear an amen? That's true. Can I have the ushers come? I'm going to share with you. We're going to receive the offering this morning. And I... And I, I just want to say the Lord is so good to us. Yeah, the Lord is good to us. Give the Lord praise offering. He is good to us. Okay, I'll just ask the blessing and, and uh, Tad can come. Tad is sharing the word of the Lord. Who's sharing next week? I don't see. Okay, we'll find out. Where's Tad at? Come on up. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for blessing and pouring out your spirit. And thank you for this offering. We give it with expectancy. And with, we just thank you in advance for that harvest that's going to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you mic'd up? I am. I'm turning this off. Got one, thanks.